Now stop talking, I'm busy. Culture page. The history behind a name. Do you know what your surname means? Surnames tell us about the history of a family. Some surnames describe a man's job, like carpenter, tailor, or fisher. Others are names of places, like hill, brook, or forest, and they describe the family's first home. Other surnames describe people. For example, Kennedy means ugly head in Gaelic. Armstrong means a person with strong arms, and go to bed means lazy. In English-speaking countries, many surnames have the same beginning or ending. So surnames with the ending son mean the son of. Davidson and Robertson, the son of David and Robert, are very common. In the USA, different versions are more common for these surnames, like Davis instead of Davidson, or Roberts instead of Robertson. In Ireland and Scotland, surnames with the beginning Mac or Muck mean the son of too. For example, MacDonald is the son of Donald. In Ireland, they also have O before names. O means of, so O'Brien is the son of Brian. Module 2. Day by day. 2A. Home life. 2. Read. A helping hand. Anna Bishop is not like other university students. She starts her day early in the morning. She gets up at 7.30, but she doesn't go to the university. She goes to Mrs. Griffin's house and they have breakfast together. Mrs. Griffin is 78 years old and needs help around the house. But most of all, she needs company. Anna does volunteer work and helps out elderly people. I cook do a bit of housework, but Mrs. Griffin and I also chat or go to the park. We go there every day and I help her walk. She says. During the week, Anna doesn't see her friends. When she finishes work, she goes to the university. She goes home at about 8 p.m. and then she studies. She has a busy day, but she doesn't mind. Mrs. Griffin is like a grandmother to me. I can see my friends at the weekend. 2B. First day on the job. 2. Read. Good morning. Laura Walker? Yes. Good morning. I'm Elliot Powell. Welcome to the Daily News. Do you know your way around? No, I don't. OK, let me show you. That office over there is the photographer's office. Do the reporters work there too? No, they don't. They're on a different floor. Through those doors is the cafeteria. When do we have a lunch break? Are you hungry already? No, it's just... I'm only joking. Lunch is from 1.30 till 2.30. Now, the graphic designers are in that office, and my office is just here. And where's the editor's office? Um, it's here. Oh, so you're the editor. You're my boss. That's right. OK, let's go upstairs and find your desk. Two C, entertainment. Two, read. One, what about a romantic comedy? I don't know. I'd like to go home and watch a DVD tonight. I'm tired. Come on. Oh look, the eye of the monster is on. We can watch that. But that's a horror film. I can't stand horror films. They're horrible. Okay, okay. Two tickets for a true friend, please. Uh. Two. Oh, I'm out of breath. Me too. Let's stop dancing for a while. In a bit. I love dancing to this song. So, what do you think of this place? It's fantastic. And the music is brilliant. Yeah, the DJ's really good. Do you want to come again next week? Sure, I'd love to. Three. Listen to this song. Isn't it great? 
Yeah, but that's rock. Mark doesn't like that kind of music. What kind does he like? Well, I know that he enjoys listening to R&B. What about this single here with Madonna and Justin Timberlake? Good idea. I think Timberlake's his favourite singer. All right then, buy it. Cross-curricular page. Information technology. Fishing for danger. The internet is part of our everyday lives. It helps us a lot. We find information. We send emails. We buy things, etc. And it's easy to use. But be careful. There are lots of dangers, like spamming and phishing. Spamming is sending unwanted emails, like advertising material, over the internet to a large number of people. You can get lots of spam, even on your fax machine, or on your mobile phone as SMS. Junk email is a type of spam. These emails try to make you buy things. Phishing is a very big problem, because the fishers want to get your personal information like your bank or credit card numbers, so they can use them. Fishers make a fake website that looks exactly like a real website and send it to people. People see it and think that it's from a bank, for example, and fill in their personal information. Phishing is common on social networking websites like MySpace or Facebook, so be careful. Song. Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. Life's so great. Let me hear you say. Day by day. Day by day. Life's so great. In every way. All day mornings off to work I go. Tuesdays I do. in different rooms. That's good. We really need a change in here. Look, the sofa is next to the armchair now, right? Well, I can put it opposite. 
opposite the fireplace. How's that? Looks fantastic. Okay. What about this room? Looks good, but I have a problem. Whose computer is that on the desk? Is it yours or mine? Yours, of course. That's out of the question. I don't want my computer there. You work in the study, after all. Oh, okay. Let's decide how to rearrange the furniture and the study, too. Great. I can help you with that, and then we can move the furniture around. 3C. Around town. 2. Read. La ville souterraine, Montreal's underground city. La ville souterraine is an underground city in and around the city centre of Montreal, Canada. The underground city is 12 square kilometres and has 32 kilometres of tunnels. It is the biggest underground complex in the world. The tunnels link 10 underground stations, two bus stations, 1,200 offices, 200 restaurants, 40 banks, 40 cinemas, nine hotels, universities, entertainment places like Place des Arts, the Bell Centre, and many others. As for shopping, there are five shopping malls and 2,600 shops. In fact, there aren't many shops above the ground in the area anymore. There are 200 entrances to the underground city, and most parts open and close with the underground, from 5.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. 500,000 people use the underground city every day, and they find it very convenient. They don't need to go above the ground at all. It is very popular with Montrealers, especially during the cold winter months, but many tourists also visit it. 3D. Rain or shine. 2. Read. 1. Hey, Stephen. What's wrong with you? I'm a bit down, that's all. Why? Because it's cloudy. I'm always depressed when the weather's like this. It's raining now, too. Just great. I don't have an umbrella today. Don't worry. I can give you a lift home. Really? That's kind of you. No problem. Two. And before I bring you the weather, here's a picture from Kenneth Robson of his cat eating an ice cream. Well, temperatures around southern England are about 36 degrees Celsius, and the usual temperature for this time of year is about 28 degrees Celsius. So, we're looking at a heat wave. Okay, let's go to the... Three. Are you watching the news? No, it's a documentary about climate change. Any good? Yes, it's quite interesting. I mean, just look outside. It usually rains at this time of year. That's true. But it isn't raining today. It's a beautiful sunny day. Exactly. 3 page. Life in Tornado Alley. Every year in the US, there are about 500 tornadoes from Texas through Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and into South Dakota. That's why this area is called Tornado Alley. The tornado season is usually in spring, but the people of Tornado Alley are always ready for them, and they always listen to the news. When the sirens go off, people use their disaster plans. At home, the best place is the basement, or a room with no windows, like the bathroom. At school, we have frequent drills, so we never panic when there's a tornado, says Alan Taylor a high school student from Texas. There's no basement at my school, so we usually go to the hallways on the lowest floors. Of course, we never sit near the windows. After the tornado, people first check to see that it's safe to go out, and then they check the buildings and the area for damages. And usually, there is a lot of damage. Module 4. Feeling good. 4A. What's on the menu? Two. Read. Are you ready to order? Yes, we're ready. I'd like some mushroom soup to start. I'm afraid we don't have any mushroom soup. 
We only have tomato soup. Okay, I'd like some of that. What toppings are on the classic pizza? It's just cheese and tomato. So, there aren't any onions on it? No, but we can add some onions. Great. I'd like a medium, please. Is that all? Yes, I think so. What would you like to drink? We'd like a bottle of mineral water, please. And for you? Is there any meat in the lasagna? No, this is a vegetarian restaurant. There's no meat in our dishes. Okay, I'd like the lasagna. What does that come with? All our pasta dishes come with a garden salad. Good. Anything else? No, that's all. Would you like to see the dessert menu? Maybe later. One more thing. There's no salt and pepper. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Can I take your menus? Here you are. Four B. Eat right. Two. Read. A rainbow on your plate. Eat five meals a day, including lots of fruit and vegetables, nutritionists say. It's important to include different kinds of fruit and vegetables in each meal. Try to make your meals colorful. It's easy. Red fruit and vegetables, like tomatoes and watermelon, protect you against some types of cancer. Some others, like strawberries and red grapes, help keep your heart healthy. A lot of orange and yellow fruit and vegetables, like carrots, are rich in vitamin A and help you have healthy eyes. They also protect you against some types of cancer and heart disease. Citrus fruit, like oranges, aren't rich in vitamin A, but they are rich in vitamin C and a type of B vitamin. They help keep your heart healthy. Green fruit and vegetables, like spinach, green peppers and green apples, help keep both your eyes and heart healthy and protect you against some types of cancer. Blue and purple fruit and vegetables, like grapes and aubergines, protect you against some types of cancer and heart disease. Blueberries also help you have a good memory. So, add a little color to your meals. 4C. Helping others. 1. Read. Get involved, Nepal. Become a volunteer and experience Nepali culture for 10 days. Come and help us change children's lives. Date, the 25th of November to the 5th of December. Visits to orphanages, workshops. Children make and learn how to play musical instruments. Children learn how to paint pictures. Fundraisers. We organize puppet shows, plays, etc. We make and sell cakes. For more information, contact info at getinvolved.net. Dear Angela, I have some good news. I'm officially a member of the Get Involved Volunteer Organization. Let me tell you all about it. Get Involved helps orphans around the world. Volunteers visit different orphanages. They organize events to raise money. They have workshops. They even help build new schools in poor countries. This year, about 20 volunteers are going to Nepal for 10 days, and I'm going with them. Can you believe it? We need to work really hard to have everything ready, but I'm really excited about going there. I'm doing the art workshop, and I'm trying to find some interesting activities for the children. Any ideas? Another volunteer, Kelly, is organizing the street puppet show. Maybe I can work with her. That's all for now. See you when I get back. Wish me luck. Take care, Beth. 4D. Healthy body, healthy mind. 2. Read. So, Mr. Hill, what seems to be the problem? Well, I have this rash on my arm. Hmm. Do you have any allergies? I'm allergic to strawberries, but I never eat them. Do you have any other problems? I have a stomach ache at the moment, and backache as well. But I'm taking painkillers for that, and I'm okay. Do you ever feel dizzy? Actually, 
Yes, I do. What do you think it is, Doctor? I'm not sure. Maybe it's stress. Do you work long hours? Yes, I have a lot of work these days, and I don't sleep much. So it's not serious, then? You shouldn't say that. Stress can be very harmful. What should I do? Well, let's do some tests to check that you're okay. But you should try to find ways to relax. I find that exercise helps. What about my rash? Should I take any medicine? I can give you a cream. Thank you very much. Cross-curricular page. Home economics. Healthy smoothie recipes. Do you eat enough fruit? Do you have milk or yogurt every day? Well, here are a few delicious ideas to help you stay healthy. Check them out. Blueberry smoothie. Blueberries have lots of vitamins. Why not enjoy blueberries and their great taste in a smoothie? Ingredients. One cup blueberries. Half a cup yogurt. One cup full fat milk. Instructions. Blend the blueberries with the yogurt and milk for about five minutes and enjoy. Banana smoothie. For a tasty smoothie full of protein, just use bananas. Ingredients. One banana, half a cup yogurt, one cup non-fat milk. Instructions. Blend the banana and milk together for 30 seconds at high speed. Add the yogurt and blend for one more minute at high speed. Now you have a delicious high protein smoothie. Salt. Feeling good. 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 There's something we in it and I'm allergic to them. Anyway, I went to the interview but when I got in the lift and looked in the mirror I got scared. I had a terrible rash all over my face. I wanted to leave but I didn't. I decided to explain my problem to the interviewer. Luckily he saw the funny side of it and the interview went really well. In fact I got the job. Rosie. I went to the gym a couple of days ago. I started with the treadmill, but I soon got tired. You see, I'm not very fit. Then some fit teenagers came in, and I didn't want to look bad. So I started running. Suddenly, the lights went out, and the treadmill stopped. I went flying into the window, and they all started laughing. Let's just say, I didn't look good. Carl. Five B. School days. Two. Read. Hi, Kyle. Why didn't you come yesterday? Where? The school reunion. The class of 1996. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Well, you missed out. We had a great time. Did lots of people go? Yes, they did. I met up with some of our old friends. Do you remember Alicia? Yeah. Well, she took a course in sports science, and now she's a PE teacher at the school. Wow. What about teachers? Did you see Mrs. Armstrong? She taught biology. No, she left the school in 2001. What about Mr. Wilkins? Yeah, I spoke to him. 
He's exactly the same, and he still teaches geography. He told me to tell you Suva, but I didn't really understand. It's a city. Wow, how did he remember that? What? Well, I failed an exam once because I didn't remember the capital of Fiji. I always found geography difficult. Me too. C. How was your holiday? 2. Read. Wow, nice view. I suppose so. What's the matter? Are you afraid of heights? <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm a bit scared, that's all. I thought you liked skiing and all the adventure. You came here last year with Tonya. Yeah, but you weren't here last year, so you don't know what happened. Why? What happened? It was our last day here, and we were on the ski lift. Suddenly, there was a loud noise, and the ski lift stopped. We were stuck up here for three hours. You spent three hours up here? Yes. We were terrified. Tonya panicked and wanted to jump, but we were 50 meters above the ground. What did you do? We waited. We just sat up here and sang. It was a terrible experience. I can imagine. Oh, why did I come skiing again? Okay, calm down. Let's think about next year. We can spend our holidays on a tropical island and sunbathe by the sea or do water sports. Okay, that doesn't sound dangerous. 5th page. The British education system. In England, Wales and Northern Ireland, about 10 million students go to one of the 30,000 schools. Primary education. Primary education starts at the age of five. Primary schools consist of infant schools for students five to seven years old, junior schools for children seven to 11 years old, and combined infant and junior schools for both age groups. Secondary education. For most students, secondary education starts at the age of 11. From the age of 11 to 14, students study subjects like music, maths, science, English, etc. At the age of 14, they enter a two-year process until they take their GCSE exams. The GCSE is the end of compulsory education for students in the UK. After that, they can leave school and look for a job, or they can continue studying for two years and do their A-levels. A-levels are common entrance exams for university. Higher education. About one third of young people go on to higher education at the age of 18. You usually need three years to get a degree Nearly all UK universities and colleges are public institutions and they have a good reputation worldwide. The most famous universities are Oxford and Cambridge. Module 6. Events. 6A. Don't miss it. 2. Read. Hey, did you see the poster about the festival? What festival? The music festival against piracy. Sounds interesting. When is it going to take place? Next week. Which bands are going to be there? Shark Attack, The Doggy Bags, Lemonade. We can't miss Shark Attack, that's for sure. Yeah, they're performing on Tuesday, I think. We're definitely going. There's also going to be a song competition on the last day, and I'm going to enter. What? Are you actually going to get on the stage and sing? Yes, I am. And I'm going to win first prize. Yeah, right. You're just going to embarrass us. 6B. Can you do me a favour? 2. Read. Hello? Hi, Fox. It's me, Cindy. Can you talk? Sure. What's up, Cindy? Is everything ready for the award ceremony? Almost. I just have to make a couple of phone calls. Could you pick up my soup from the dry cleaners? Of course. Anything else? 
Will you arrange a meeting with my manager for tomorrow? Of course I will. And did you book a limo for the awards ceremony? But I'm going to give you a lift there. It's not far. No. I have to arrive in a limo, Cindy. It's my big night. Can you arrange it? Let me see what I can do. Good afternoon, Alan's Limos. How may I help you? Hello. I need a limo for the evening of the 17th. Could you... I'm afraid we're fully booked for that evening. Is it for the award ceremony? That's right. What am I going to do? Fox isn't going to be happy. I have to find a limo for him. Is that Fox Marshall, the actor? That's right. I'm his PA. Listen, a friend of mine is a big fan of Fox, and he owns a limo company too. Would you give him a call for me? Certainly. Don't worry. We can't let Fox arrive without a limo, can we? Great. 6C. Join in the fun. 1. Read. Ready. Steady. Cheese. Every year, on the last Monday of May, the people of Brockworth in Gloucestershire, England, organise quite an unusual event, the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling. This event is at least 200 years old. People chase a round block of cheese down a steep hill. The aim is to catch the rolling cheese. It's not easy, and this rarely happens because the cheese moves at a speed of 70 miles per hour. So the winner is the first person to cross the finish line at the bottom of the hill. There are cheese rolling races for all ages, so everybody can take part. All you have to do is stand at the top of the hill, wait for the command, and be quick and careful because you can end up rolling downhill just like the cheese. Seems dangerous? Well, competitors and even spectators can get injured during the races, so there are paramedics everywhere at the top and bottom of the hill. For something a bit safer, try the uphill race. In this race, all competitors just run up the hill. The winners of all the races get a cheese as a prize. The competitors in second and third place receive a small amount of money. Adults 10 and five pounds, children five pounds. So, are you a daredevil? Just remember, Choose the right footwear and join in the fun. 6D. Take action. 2. Read. Animals have rights. Animals have rights. Animals have rights. 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 Josie, is that you? Hi, Clive. What's going on here? It's a protest march. People need to know that animals have rights. I see. Why don't you join us? No, thanks. I'm not really into that sort of thing. Oh, I see. So you aren't against animal testing? I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't exactly agree, but it helps science and saves lives, right? There are other ways, you know. Here, take a leaflet to read. Okay, thanks. It has information about cruelty to farm animals, too. Oh, I think the way some chickens live is terrible. Good. So you're a vegetarian, too? Not really. I like fried chicken, I'm afraid. That's a shame. And is that a leather jacket? Um, it's not mine, actually. But it is very warm. A cow died so you can wear that, you know. I suppose it did. Listen, are you free later? Yes. Why? How about having lunch together? There's a place round the corner with great burgers. I don't think so. Oh, right. They have salads, too. Josie? Josie! Cross curricular page. Science. Animals in danger. The thylacine, also called the Tasmanian tiger or wolf, became extinct in Australia thousands of years ago, but continued to live on the island of Tasmania until the 20th century. People hunted them till extinction, and the last one died in a zoo in 1936. Dodos lived on the island of Mauritius, and they became extinct in the 17th century. When sailors first arrived on the island, they didn't hunt them very much because
because they didn't taste nice. But the sailors destroyed the forest and brought other animals, like dogs, cats and rats, onto the island. These animals ate dodo eggs, and now dodos don't exist anymore. There are about 150 Barbary lions in the world, and they all live in zoos. They are very big animals and can weigh up to 270 kilograms. There were Barbary lions in the Tower of London from the 13th century until 1835, when zookeepers moved them to London Zoo. At the Charles Darwin Research Station on the island of Santa Cruz, there is a giant tortoise. His name is Lonesome George, and he is the last known Pinta Island tortoise in the world. He is 60 to 90 years old, and he is in good health. He is quite lonely, though. The snow leopard lives high in the mountains of Central Asia. There are 4,500 to 7,000 snow leopards in the wild, but people rarely see them. They are great hunters and can jump 14 meters. The blue whale is the biggest animal ever to live on Earth. Blue whales can be 33 meters long and weigh 180 tons. They're endangered because people whalers hunt them. Sol, do me a favour. Could you do me a favour? Can you help me, please? What's your problem? Tell me what you need. My laptop is broken. Can I borrow yours? Sure. No problem. What do you need it for? I have a huge project for work to do. Do you need a printer? Borrow that too. <laughs> You're the best. How can I thank you? <laughs> Please don't thank me. You do the same for me, too. What's yours is mine. What's mine is yours. Do it favors. That's what best friends are for. What's yours is mine. What's mine is yours. Do it favors. That's what best friends are for. What's yours is mine. What's mine is yours. Module 7. One of a kind. 7a. A perfect fit. 2. Read. How about new pyjamas for Tommy? Good idea. These checked ones are nice, and they're quite cheap. Are they cotton? 80% and 20% polyester. That's okay. What size is he? These ones don't look big enough for him. They're okay. They're for children aged between 5 and 6 years old. Look, they also have them in light green. Nice. Let's get those green ones then. So, did you find a skirt? Yes, I like this red one. What size did you choose? A medium. The large one was too big on me. I also tried on this white top and it fits me very well. Nice. And we have a 30% discount on those tops. Really? How much is it then? Um, let me see. It costs £20. Great! Would you like to pay in cash or by credit card? Credit card. Okay, that's £95 altogether. Oh no, I don't have it with me. It's okay, here's £100. Thank you very much. Here's £5 change and your receipt. 7B. Good looks. 2. Read. The other me. 
A lot of psychologists say that dogs look like their owners, but is this true? The weekly magazine Pets took separate pictures of 30 dog owners and their dogs. The reader's task was to find the true match. It was easier than we thought. Have a look at some of our matches. It's really interesting. Gary is in his late 30s. He's tall and slim, and he loves going for long walks on the beach with his best friend, Diesel. We love the sea, says Gary. They both have beautiful blue eyes, but Gary admits that Diesel is more handsome than he is. Everybody wants to play with him when they go out together. Tyler is a bit chubby, and so is his dog, Buster. They can both be very aggressive sometimes, but they calm down easily. People always tell me that Buster and I have similar characteristics, and I find it really funny. I sometimes say that he's my younger brother, <laughs> says Tyler. Madison is a good-looking young woman in her early 30s. Her short curly black hair made it easy for the readers to match her picture with Lady, her pet dog. We spend a lot of time together, and in fact, Lady's my best friend. She's a great listener, and it's easier for me to talk to her than any other friend of mine, admits Madison. 7C. Getting there. 2. Read. Different ways to get around. Daniel. A couple of years ago, I visited my cousin in the States. That was when I first rode the Segway PT, and I was amazed. You see, the Segway is the best and quickest way to get around the city. You can avoid crowded buses and heavy traffic, and it is environmentally friendly too. So when I got back home, I ordered one over the net. Of course, I couldn't afford the latest model, so I got the cheapest one on the market. The Segway is so convenient. Ethan. Last year, my wife and I were in Botswana. There, it's common for people to travel around the Okavango Delta on a Makoro. For tourists, this is the most popular way to visit the Delta, but it's also quite dangerous. Why? Well, we were on a Makoro when a hippopotamus attacked us. Luckily, nothing happened, but we were terrified. I don't think I want to go anywhere by boat again. Zoe. My family and I visited Thailand last June, and we had an unbelievable experience. It is an amazing place, and it looks even better when you're on top of the largest land animal in the world. Elephant rides are popular with tourists, but they're also the most expensive way to travel. The truth is that it was worth every penny. 7D. Worth visiting. 1. Read. At the entrance. Hi. Welcome to the Empire State Building. Good morning. Which way do I go? Just go straight and take the escalators up to the second floor, then go through security. Okay, can I leave my bag anywhere? I'm sorry, there's no coat room here. It's okay, I can carry it. Where do I go after security? Turn right and go straight to the ticket purchase line, then follow the rest of the people to the elevators. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. At the top. Wow, this is brilliant. Is that Central Park over there? Yes, it is. And that's Fifth Avenue, going towards Harlem. I know. I went shopping there yesterday. You should go to Macy's, too. Where is it? Can you see that red sign down there? Yes. Well, that's Macy's. When you come out of the main entrance, turn left, and then left again. That's 34th Street. Go straight, past Broadway, and Macy's is on your right. You can't miss it. It's the world's largest store. It's pretty awesome. Thanks a lot. Culture page. Driving around. Do you think that driving laws are the same all over the world? Well, they aren't. And this sometimes makes driving difficult. Similarities. Traffic lights mean the same thing everywhere. 
Red means stop, green means go, and amber means get ready to stop. You have to wear your seatbelt at all times. You have to keep to the speed limit. You also have to drive slowly in front of schools. Differences. In most parts of the world, including the US and Canada, people drive on the right side of the road. But in the UK, Australia, and other places, they drive on the left. In Europe and Canada, there are many roundabouts. In the US, there aren't any. So when people from the US go to Europe or Canada, it's hard for them to drive around them. The US has an organization called the Automobile Association of America, AAA, or AAA. And the UK has a similar organization to help drivers called the Automobile Association, the AA. In the US and Canada, you have to be at least 16 to drive. In the UK, you have to be 17, and in Australia, from 16 to 18 depending on where you live. Module 8. Adventure. 8B. That's life. 2. Read. Where have you been? It's a long story. You missed the 10 o'clock meeting. You've never missed a meeting before. I know, I know. Where's Mr. Miller? He's gone to the bank. He was really angry when you didn't show up. Well, it wasn't exactly my fault. What happened? I had a car accident on my way to the office. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, and the car is okay too. The other guy's car is pretty bad, though. Anyway, I drove off, and about 100 meters down the road, I got a flat tire. No. How unlucky. Tell me about it. I had a nightmare trying to change it. Have you ever changed a tire? Yes, I have. Many times. The last time changed one was last year when I was on holiday. Well, it was my first time and I had trouble changing it. It took me about an hour. So that's why you're late. You haven't heard it all. After the tire, I drove down the road a bit and the car just stopped. Why? No petrol. So I pushed it to the side of the road and walked to a petrol station. Unbelievable. All aboard. Two. Read. Wear your life jackets at all times, but don't use the whistle. It's for emergencies only. You can find life jackets on the port side. Please wait here. I need to get some more rope. I have to say, our sailing instructor is a bit scary. A bit? He looks like a pirate. He knows what he's doing, though. That's true. I hope we don't get seasick. Nah, the sea doesn't look rough at all. OK, let's get our life jackets. But we're still in the port. He told us to wear them at all times. OK, OK. Where did he say they were? They're on the port side. What does that mean? Don't you pay attention to anything? Port means left and starboard means right. Why can't we just say left and right? Because that's what sailors say. Here's a life jacket. Put it on. Give it here. Ah, here's the whistle. Don't blow it. He told us not to use it. Only in an emergency. Besides, it's bad luck to blow a whistle on a boat. How do you know? I read it somewhere. You know, you're starting to annoy me. I'm going for a walk. But he asked us to wait here. I'm not going far. Eight D. Exciting places. Two. Read. All about Peru. Peru is a country in Western South America. Its population is about 28 million and the official language is Spanish. Lima is the capital city of Peru and it is also the largest city in the country. The Andes lie on the western coast of South America and are the longest mountain range in the world. The highest mountain in the Peruvian Andes is Huascaran at 6,768 meters. Llamas are very common in the Andes. These clever and gentle animals are from the camel family. The Incas use them to carry things as people still do today. The Inca Trail was an ancient road system 
but today it is a true hiker's paradise. It starts from the sacred valley of the Urubamba River and ends at the ancient city of the Incas, Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is about 2,350 meters above sea level and is one of Peru's most popular tourist attractions. Lake Titicaca is on the border of Bolivia and Peru and it is the largest in South America. There are 42 artificial islands and on them live a group of people called the Uros. The Nazca Desert is home to some mysterious geometrical shapes called the Nazca Lines. Who created them and why? Nobody knows. The Peruvian Amazon is the second largest jungle in the world. Over 70% of all living species live in this part of the Amazon rainforest. Cross curricular page. P. Ice hockey. History. Ice hockey, or hockey, is an exciting winter sport played on an ice rink. The modern game started in Montreal on the 3rd of March, 1875. In the USA, the first hockey game was between Yale University and Johns Hopkins University in 1893. Today, the National Hockey League, NHL, is the largest organization for the sport in the US and Canada, and hockey is the official winter sport of Canada. The game. There are six players in each team. Players skate on the ice and try to score a goal by shooting the puck into the other team's goal. There are three 20-minute periods. If there is a tie at the end, there can be an extra sudden death overtime period, or even a shootout. In a shootout, the players take turns trying to shoot the puck into the other team's goal. Rules. There are referees and officials on and near the ice to make sure no one breaks the rules. When players break the rules, they go to the penalty box and sit there for two, four, or five minutes until their penalty is over. Examples of offenses are moving the puck with your hands, raising your stick too high, high sticking, or tripping another player. So, wonderful world. Do you ever sit alone in your room?